All right, here to play some Brogue. Um, I thought I was recording earlier, but I wasn't. So I I really want to cover this game because I've only played this game three times, starting yesterday, and I'm having a lot of fun. I have a big history with like NetHack and Angband, and Adam, and uh, I wanted to check out this game even though it came out kind of a long time ago and I never tried it out. So this is just kind of a quick overview of why this game's cool, I guess. Um, so retrieve the amulet of Yendor from the 26th floor. This is kind of like the uh, the storyline of NetHack, except um, there's less floors, I guess. That's fine though. Um, let's see here. We got next turn tab on pause. Okay. It says mouse left on the bottom of my screen because I kind of set up like a um, this weird key press thing so I can like push buttons. It's not that cool on the recording, but it might be easier for people to follow what's going on because sometimes uh, roguelikes can move kind of quick. So I named the recording Weird Room because I'm so unfamiliar with this game that I don't know what anything is. Um, it's cool. This game is a, you know, it's a roguelike, so it uses a lot of the same mechanics, and you can transfer some of that knowledge from other games in. But there's still enough uniqueness to it that um, I'm having a blast playing it because I, I don't know what's going on. So just here, real quickly, I, I killed some kobolds, and this this uh, monkey is in uh, in shackles. So I can release this monkey, and it says you gain a faithful ally. So I got a pet monkey, sort of not really a pet. More like an ally, a coworker. So I'm just exploring around right now, picking up everything that I can find. All right, and that was a a bloat, or a, yeah, a bloat. And I blew it up, and it's got this purple gas leaking everywhere. It looks pink on my monitor. I don't know how it looks on your uh, on the stream here. But I'm gonna run away from that. I'm gonna kind of rush through this because I, I just want to show like kind of an early game experience that I had uh, when I didn't know at all what I was doing. And um, these new player experiences are really fun when they're genuine. So here I'm finding these weird rooms. There's this carpet on the ground, and uh, you can see on the bottom it describes what I'm mousing over. So you see the carpet. Then there are these uh, wands, kind of like valuable items on altars. And there's a there's a dry wooden barricade here. There's a locked iron door in front of this one. So it kind of spoils it. It says uh, when you click on it that it can be destroyed by um, by fire. So I'm looking for a way to get fire. Really, that's an early game objective because it looks like there's a lot of really cool items there. I actually found another interesting room here. Um, steel wand, scale mail, and there's a, a portcullis in front of it. There's also a pressure plate here in front of a, this is like a hole, I guess like a chasm. I get really cozy with that chasm later on because I'm trying to hit that pressure plate. I think the pressure plate opens up the portcullis. Um, the, the dry wooden door obviously can be burnt down, but the iron lock door needs to be opened with a key. So that's me jumping down the chasm. All it did was it brought me to the next dungeon level. Actually closer to a near chasm, a much larger one. So I almost die here. I'm taking a lot of damage. I took damage from the fall and from combat. Whenever anyone walks in, I just throw a dart at him. I'm trying to avoid melee combat because I don't want to die. I actually thought the chasm was a lake for some reason and I was going to like swim to the pressure plate. It was really bad. Picking up more scrolls here. I'm just exploring. This game has a cool um, auto exploration function. There's a there's a pressure plate here, and I just couldn't help it. Like I had to step on it. I wanted to know what it was, and it was a confusion trap. So you got this really pretty. Uh, it animates even when paused during the recording, which is really cool. But um, this really pretty. Uh, this is the confusion gas, kind of like pastel-y colors. And uh, I think I just rest through it because I don't want to die. But it's really bad to be confused in, in roguelikes. 
Uh, there are worse things that can happen to you, but being confused is definitely not good. All right, this is the first like really pause, 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 pause. All right, the first really bullshit enemy that I came across because I I kind of wanted to pause earlier, but I I can show that I, I fight more of them later. This is a goblin conjurer, and he summons these bullshit spectral blades. There there are five of them, and they like spin around him and launch at you, and they're enemies that you have to kill. And He's, you can see he's cheese mowing me here because he's hiding behind these guys and letting them tank. I have to fight these. I can't, uh, I can't range attack him because there's a wall here, of course, and enemies in the way that'll block it. So I decide I'm gonna, I, I, I come back, I fight some more. I said I'm gonna run all the way around and try to flank him back here because by the time I kill all of them, he summons more. But, um, yeah, see, he's, he just summoned five more. But I kind of I get to like right here, and I realize that I remember this confusion trap. I don't want to trigger it again and die, so I just end up fighting them. I get really low. I'm at like 30% health right now, so I rest up, and uh, I end up getting an opening. He leads past his spectral blades down the hallway, so I can just throw darts at him, and end up taking him out. Well, I think they might have been javelins actually, but Just desperately trying to get my health back up so I can keep playing. So I'm starting to realize at this point that I have a lot of potions and scrolls that I haven't identified. Normally when I play a roguelike, I don't use those at all. I, I let them sit there until I have a mechanism with which I can uh, identify them because sometimes they're really bad. Like in NetHack is one, if you read the scroll, um, it like gets shackles on your legs and there's like this big ass heavy ball you have to drag around. It's really bad. It slows you down. Um, it's awful. There's ones, I mean, you could, you can quaff a potion of poison and die. Um, or fire and die. Um, there's just so many terrible things that can happen to you. If you put on an amulet that's not identified, it could be an amulet of strangulation. Obviously, those are cursed. You can't take them off, and they just strangle you, and you die in like three turns. So and this is pretty common for roguelikes. So I'm not trying to win here, though. I'm trying to have fun, and I'm trying to learn more about this new game. So I think I end up quaffing like all of the potions and reading all the scrolls just to kind of see what I'm up against because I've played some newer indie roguelikes that aren't actually that dangerous like you could read every scroll and it's unlikely anything bad will happen to you um I was retrying the chasm because I thought that maybe if I did it from another angle it would work and then I just gave up because it's really dangerous so here I'm going back I think I'm going to start checking out what I got okay so I quaffed a potion of strength, a potion of life, which increased my max hit points by 33%, which I think is higher than normal. It might have been blessed. I think normally you only get 25%. A potion of fire immunity. So you can see on the top top left here, I'm immune to fire. Uh, detect magic, which is really good because it gives me these modifiers here. You can see that it's white. I can see it on the stream. So yeah, it's white next to some of these, and it's black next to some of them. I think the black ones are cursed and the white ones are blessed. I, I don't know, though. I'm still not sure, but I know white is good, black is bad. So now I have this kind of modifier here that I can work with. Am I done already? Oh, there we go. Okay, so I read a scroll of identify. And I used it to identify one of the scrolls, which turned out to be a scroll of Protect Armor. And I couldn't figure out how to use the scroll of Protect Armor. It doesn't show up on the recording, but I passed a lot of turns trying to read them. And it kept saying something like, um, this scroll is not equipped. Which doesn't make sense because you don't actually equip scrolls, so I don't really know. I'm not sure how to get past that part. I'll figure it out. Scroll of Enchantment. I read it and used it on my dagger. Because... Uh, it's kind of a silly thing to do, actually, to just enchant a terrible dagger, but I'm not going to get very far in this game because I'm terrible, so I figure a little bit of boost might help me. We got a uh, 
Oh, I guess I crossed another potion of strength. I've got a scroll of magic mapping. You can see the pink portions here. That was a previously undiscovered. Not that exciting, but it's it's cool to have. Uh, let's see. Oh, scroll of sanctuary. So there's like these runes here. Yeah, sacred glyphs that appear on the ground, and I'm standing on one of them. It says it's a warding enchantment, so I think it might work work, work kind of like Elbereth in a net hack where it like repels enemies. But I, I really don't know. I could, I didn't figure it out. And I'm off. So my strategy here, I have two different potions, the indigo and the tan potions, that I don't know what they do. And they're bad. I know they're bad. So I'm not going to quaff them just to figure out what they are. So I decided to walk down to uh, to the next level here and just chuck one at that door, that wooden door, just to see if one of them was like a potion of fire was my idea. Or maybe like a bomb or a potion of explosion. Those are in like Angband. Well, in Tome. I don't know if they're in Angband, but... I'm just resting up here. Went down the wrong staircase. Alright, here we go. So here's the door that I can I can supposedly catch on fire. So I walk up, take a step back, and I chuck the first potion I think of, which is, I believe it was an indigo potion. And I get I get kind of lucky, because bam, the whole place catches on fire. So the door goes away. These are billowing flames, these like carrot shaped symbols, these are billowing flames. And this, all this here is this amazing graphical effect. If you don't play roguelikes, you probably don't care. Like you're used to nice graphics. But roguelikes like this, they have at signs for your character, they got weird pound symbols for the for the walls. This isn't really a console like most roguelikes. It's, that's why is because they're they're designed in consoles before graphics were even on computers. Um, consoles, of course, just the things that you chat into or uh, talk into, like DOS. You might be familiar with DOS. Um, anyways, the games were all created in text consoles, and this is sort of a sort of referring back to that. But it's it's obviously a graphical game because there's these brilliant um, graphics. It's a really pretty game, and so it's really nice because it it kind of it's like a unique juxtaposition between where roguelikes came from and sort of where they can go so I don't know if a lot of people are playing this game um, I hope a lot of people are playing this game because it's really good it's so much fun so I'm freaking out so I don't know if you noticed I forgot to mention it I one of the things I quaffed I, I don't know how I missed it but it was a, po a potion of fire resistance and so I thought that I was still fire resistant and I was like it's I play it really bad basically I'm burning I'm on fire Luckily there's a lake right here, and I walk into the water. It's only up to my knees, but it still extinguishes me. And I'm just kind of chilling here, and an eel comes out and bites me. These eels are really powerful. This eel would kill me in three hits. It's You can see it says it like right near the center in three hits. So I I back off, and I rest for like 100 turns here, just re regaining health and waiting for the uh, the fire to go away. Okay, and now I finally get to enter this room. I, I For a while there, when that explosion happened and I saw that I was burning, I thought I was going to die. I thought I was never going to see what was inside this room. And also, bear in mind, this is my second time playing the game. Uh, if you've played this game very much, uh, which I've played one more time after this, I streamed it like an hour ago, um, you'll know that the, I, I don't think these rooms are that, that uncommon. I, I was just kind of like amped about it because I was new to the game and I was like, oh, what's this new interesting thing? So I get in here, nice carpet, some stone marble statues, whatever. And then there's these items. They're elevated on an altar. You can see on the bottom is lying on a candle lit altar. And they, they all are. And then these are like magical items, you know, probably less common. The uh, Wanda Polymorphism, uh, Negation Charm, Stealth. There's chainmail, I think, split mail, and uh, a door key. So as a net hack player, I'm about polymorph because I, I don't know if it's actually that powerful in other roguelikes. I've never really manipulated polymorph in other roguelikes, but in net hack, it's really really strong. You get a um, you get a pet at the start of the game, and you could potentially zap them with polymorph, and if it doesn't kill them. Which there are weird situations where it could. 
they may turn into a dragon or an ogre or one of those one of the many really broken enemies that you can fight in that hack that are just meant to kill you that can kill you by looking at you basically or kill you by touching you so um there's other things too like you can pile on magical items on top of each other and zap them all with a wand of polymorph and they'll turn into other magical items so you could grab a not very helpful magical item and maybe get a really helpful one there's a lot of other ways to use wand of polymorphs too they're really manipulable. So that's the first. I just beat my for it and pick it up right away. I'm starting to think about it and thinking maybe I don't really need this. And right as I am, when you step off, everything slams shut. All the altars get like these big um, cages around them. And I, I don't know where. It doesn't really tell you in the replay, but it tells you in game somehow that if you replace the item back on the altar, then the cages will lift up. So. I go back and I put it back on and I'm thinking like these all look pretty cool the negation charm is interesting you can apply it and, it and it negates magical effects of enemies that are within your line of sight and any items that are on the ground within four within yeah four spaces away it doesn't really seem that useful to me I mean okay like it's probably really useful but I didn't really want it that much um, splint mail you know I, I need to be stronger I only have 14 strength, and you can see in the second paragraph that I'll receive penalties for being so weak and trying to wear heavy armor. Ring of Stealth, I probably should have grabbed this in retrospect. Um, I don't. I can actually push tab here and get more info. Um, plus one Ring of Stealth, so it's not even. I don't even think that's very good, but still, still seems really good in this game. Um, pro probably partially because I don't understand the stealth uh, mechanics in this game yet. But um, I imagine it might be really strong. And then a door key. The door key obviously goes to the locked iron door. Uh, I decided just to take door number two, and I, I grab the, the the door key, um, just because I'm just here to explore. Like, if I was playing the game trying to win, you know, I probably would have walked in and like tried to look through the door a little bit, maybe scan it out and see, you know, how likely it was that there'd be something in there that I preferred. But um, I, I just wanted to, I'm just having fun here and exploring. Oh, but first I actually go over to the, the far away carpeted room. Because, see, this is the chasm that I kept going down. And it just says you see a hole in this game. I don't know why I thought it was a lake. I have no idea. But there's this pressure plate here. And I'm just so sure that if you activate the pressure plate, it will open this port course. But I, don't, I can't get over there. I don't have a jump mechanism. Um, I actually think I do have a, I think I get a potion of levitation. I don't know if that'll help you go over um, chasms. It might seem obvious that it would, but I've played games where you would fall down the chasm even if you're levitating, because you can only le levitate so far off the ground in some games, and you need like flying in order to go over it. So I'm just kind of poking at this, like trying to open it. Um, this room is actually pretty cool. I found out with the, the omniscience mode, the tab mode, uh, plus four ring of stealth. It, I mean, obviously it's better than a plus one ring of stealth, right? Um, there's a staff of entrancement, and um, <clears throat> <coughs> sorry. <coughs> oh man. <clears throat> Anyways, sorry about that. Went down the wrong tube. Um, you can use the effect to cause one creature to attack another, or to step into hazardous terrain. So that, because like they go into a, a trance, I guess, and they'll mindlessly mirror your movements. And I don't even want this staff. Like I don't, I'm never. I would. I don't think I would ever use that staff. But well, actually, I might maybe if I got really good at this game. But just from a game design standpoint, how cool is that? Like. Imagine like some orc lord or something and he's in the middle of a pack of orcs and you like Actually, you probably wouldn't be able to zap him because it probably goes in a line But let's just say you could and then you just like step right and it'll just start like punching his uh, his orc friends and taking them out um, You can make them walk into hazards so I could like if, if there was an enemy across the chasm I could zap them with it and then take a step back and then they would go forward I guess and fall into the chasm so that's pretty awesome. Um, anyways, I'm going to stop talking about that one. Uh, staff of Tunneling, it tunnels. 
one of empowerment. I guess this makes people or like uh, monsters like stronger and smarter. So you can like zap it on your allies. And if you ever reflects back to you, it won't affect you. Plus three scale mail. That's pretty good. So I'd get an armor rating of seven. That's I wish I could have got that. That's really good. A rapier, that's not impressive, I don't think at all, is it? Uh, a dagger of paralysis. That would have been actually if I could have chosen, I would have chosen that one. Because it's plus three, so it already does extra damage. Plus I get my strength bonus from using a dagger. 19% of the time it's an enemy paralyzed him for three turns. I mean that's so strong. I wish I could have got that. Okay, but I didn't. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna enter this room. Did I pass it? Oh wait, no. I'm going back to check to see if I can I still have the door key. And I realize I don't. I was kinda hoping I could use the key, open the door, go back, return the key, and then get a different item. Um that probably seems silly because everyone that's a gamer knows that keys magically disappear after you use them, but I hadn't used a key yet in this game, so I really wanted to make sure. Okay, so there's a ring of transference. That's I I beeline it straightforward because I, I read the descriptions. But the not on the internet, I read it on the screen, because it actually tells you what they are, just like it does now. Um so there's the ring of reaping, and this one is like the most exciting to me, probably one of the most exciting enemies or items in the game besides the uh entrancement. Whenever you like deal damage to an enemy, depending on how much damage you deal, it'll recharge your staves and your or I, I guess I should say staffs, because that's how they spell in this game. Recharge your staffs and your charms. And um I just imagine getting really lucky and having a ring of reaping and a really broken staff and just going to town for the whole game, just having a lot of fun. Um that would also recharge items like this, the negation charm, even though well anyways. Ring of Awareness helps you uh, locate traps and hidden doors, stuff like that. And then the Ring of Transference, I can't, well, I have it in my inventory, I'll check it in my inventory. So, it's kind of like vampirism, but it's subtly different than vampirism. But, it, uh, depending on how much damage you deal, you gain a percentage, or you gain a percentage of the damage you deal back in life. In life. So, it's subtly different than allocating damage because it doesn't reduce the damage you deal, and it's subtly different than vampirism because the extra drain effect isn't added. It's not like you have a dagger with like, you know, that has a charm on it that drains health, you know, three. So every time you hit, it drains three health because it actually does extra damage. Transference, like, my weapon will still do the same amount of damage, but I'll gain a little bit of health. A little bit of health. I d didn't notice it at all in this game. I put it on and. It's plus one, I think, if I remember correctly. Oh, plus three. Yeah, I just, I never noticed it. So, I don't know. Anyways. Onward. I go muck around in there hoping that I can get lucky and get in somehow, but it's just not going to happen. Now, I do wonder if I managed to get that wand of digging, if I could have come back and broke down the altars, but I, I don't think so. It just doesn't feel like that's what would happen. So, chopping up some jackals here. That was the most interesting thing probably to happen in the run, one of two things. I want to I want to show you some of the enemies that I had to fight though. So this is the pink jelly and I had no remember I'm totally blind. Like I I don't know how to play this game. And pink jellies aren't a thing like kobolds where they're in every roguelike and you know don't eat the kobold you'll die or anything like that. The pink jelly like I mean there probably are pink jellies in every roguelike but they don't always do this bullshit cuz watch when you hit it it splits. So it's like a it's like a brown pudding in um in that hack. And I don't notice for some reason because <laughs> I'm bad at video games. So I just keep hitting him like five times before I'm like, wait a minute, and then I start running because I just realize what's going on. And then I read the description like around here. And here I'll read it to you too. It's like yeah, whenever wait, the pink jelly doesn't regenerate, divides in two when struck and never sleeps. So, basically, like, in my head, that means I have to kill it in one hit, otherwise I will never be able to defeat them. And, I mean, unless I'm doing my math wrong in my head, it's like, if there's a jelly, and then you hit it, and it splits in two, even if this one only has one hit points, like, there's no way to fully eliminate all of the jelly. And I, I can see here, it tells you in the third paragraph, and, and uh, could defeat it in three hits. 
typically. So I probably will die here. That's what I'm thinking in my head. Um, but I just melee them anyways because I don't really have a choice. And they end up, well, you can see they maxed out there. But they end up dwindling. I don't really know why. Like, I don't know. There's something I'm missing about the about the way pink jellies work because I feel like unless there's a wide range of damage you can deal with one strike, and it says, oh, it'll take three hits to kill one, but it could take one without a critical strike or anything unlikely. I I don't know why, but you know, I do it here again, and there ends up being like five of them at a time, but I still take them all out. Here's a toad. This is the first time I fought a toad. Um, I didn't read their uh, description because I'm again I'm bad at video games I guess. But the toad can induce hallucinations. This is the, the fourth paragraph there. So I hit it, and then there's this like really cool, pretty. I don't know. I don't think it shows up that well on the Twitch stream, but they're all like sparkling and changing colors, the walls and everything. And you can see in front of me, even in the recording, even though it's it's paused, it's still animating, and so it's changing into a, sna a snake. Um, an arrow turret, uh, a unicorn, and uh, if it's really cool because also if you if you focus on it, you can see the 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 third grouping on the left is describing what I'm targeting, right? It's describing an arrow turret, a goblin warlord. You can see its activity; it's skipping. The Dar Blade Master is crying. <laughs> the goblin mystic is skipping. Humming, whistling, quivering, the monkey's quivering. Near totem is humming. I mean, just imagine like what your character is going through right now. In in the middle of a dungeon, depth four, I've never, I've never been this deep at this point. Even though that's really shallow, I've never made it here. Because I've only played once before this game, I think. And uh, I died really quickly. You know, just alone in a room. And there's like a humming near totem in front of you and everything's like sparkling. Anyways, they're really easy to kill toads. They're... They're not that dangerous, like intrinsically, but the confusion effect is dangerous in itself. And I just sit there. I don't move. <laughs> There's a laughing spectral sword uh, down the hall, so I run towards it. Of course, that's what you do. I kill the the tentacle horror. <laughs> Anyways, maybe I'm overly amused by that, but that's really funny. So There's a pit blow here, and uh, I'm. Kind of going slow here, but the game's actually moving a bit faster, and I don't notice it's a pit blow when I hit it, and I fall down. I probably thought I was still confused, because anyways, pit bloats will blow up, and then they'll destroy the floor under them, and then you'll fall down, and that's actually okay. I took like 25% of my health, and now I'm in the next floor. I don't even think I go back up. I think I just keep going. So. There's a monkey. He steals my scroll of identity, but I shoot him with a dart. I'm a bad person. Vampire bat. There's another toad here. The pantificating goblin conjurer. <laughs> that sparkling, of course, is actually lava. That's not a hallucination effect. This game is just naturally that pretty. So I'm passing turns out here. I'm not waiting. Um, I'm just restoring my health. There's some pink jellies. They're really, really, I'm irritated now because they're so annoying to fight and like they're scary because I don't know how many there's going to be. I don't know if something else is going to come out and attack me while I'm trying to deal with these guys. I grabbed a scroll of enchantment, but I just, um, I immediately used it on my dagger. I, I skipped it. I wanted to show you, but that red fog was like bloodwort. There's a plant in the game, and if you pop the spores, the vapor, the gas comes out, and it heals your wounds. It's really cool. And they'll, I've noticed they'll have anywhere from two to four spores on them. And you can just pop a spore, and then keep playing, and come back and pop another spore. You don't have to do it all at once. That's an arrow trap here. I don't know why he says there's a stone wall, because there's an arrow trap. You can clearly see it. Arrow turret. And uh, yeah, the, as expected, they'll shoot you with arrows. Pick up some gold, go down. So this is kind of cool. This is a a rickety rope bridge, and this is a chasm. So I'm crossing a chasm on a rickety rope bridge. It's an empty room. Okay, so this is the this is one of the cheesy things, and I'm kind of interested in why this happens. 
I don't know if it's really artificial intelligence that made this happen, or if it's just because of some weird game mechanic I don't understand. But they cheese me here. They cheese me. Um, so I step in, and they come up to fight. This is pretty standard, right? Um, I back up because I want them to chase me. The idea is, of course, I want them to chase me down this hallway here. So that there'll be one in a row in a line. And I can bottleneck them. But they don't chase me. Like, I cannot get them to come out of this room. And you can see they're, they're, they're making a space here. So they're not even standing in front of the door. And the thing is, if I step forward here, I'll take hits from all of them. But I can't hit, it might look like I can hit this goblin here, but I can't. This, you can't attack diagonally like that through a doorway. Or outside of a hallway. Or anything like that. I'm not really sure why. It's just how the game works. So they're cheesing me here. And they're making me, like, I'm trying really hard to bait them out. And I just run in. I'm like, okay, fine, I'll fight you. And see how quickly they, they drop my health up here. Like, I'm already at half health. It's been like four turns. I even killed one of them. And, it, like, it killed one and traded half my health. And there's three more. And an ogre. I didn't actually notice, but it's shackled. It's a shackled ogre. So if I had killed these goblins and freed the, freed the ogre, then... Um, it would have been my ally. But these guys come in five hits, five hits, five hits. So it's basically two turns of combat. Uh, they'll all come in together. So I run. They're not going to leave, then that's fine. I'll just bail and go try something else out. And honestly, at this point, I was kind of freaked out that I couldn't cheese them. Because um, I'm just really used to doing that in roguelikes. Just taking people out really easily with only a little bit of tactics and it's just not possible. Here's another pink jelly and I'm really ticked off at this point because I have like 30, 20, 15, 10% health right now but somehow I live like barely. Um, I, I completely forgot about my potion of life. Potion of life will increase my max health but it'd be really useful but I forgot about it. I didn't use it and I'm still using my plus three dagger for some reason. I didn't even consider equipping my warhammer. I don't even know if that would be better. No, it wouldn't, because I have an adequate strength. But, you know, I'm, I'm trying. So I'm coming back here. I'm trying to rest. I get interrupted by a vampire bat, which I take out just barely. Just barely. Let me look at my health. And then I try to rest more. I don't actually remember what happens next. Oh, another pink jelly. <laughs> so, okay. At this point, I'm thinking, I'm just going to just fuck the pink jelly. I'm, I got to go. I got to play this game. But then I see a goblin conjurer. And um, that's the spinning blade bullshit, guys. And I realize that I have to kill the jelly because I can't run around with the jelly behind me. And, like, if I have to run, I won't be able to run because it takes forever to kill jelly. So I just go over here and I just take him out and tank him. And he does, like, half my health and damage. Well, they do. I hit the toad, pretty colors, kill something, I don't know what they are. This is the arrow turret, it actually zapped me. I got a monkey and a vamp bat. This vamp bat is kind of strong for some reason, it almost kills me. I, I don't know why. I'm hitting it, but whatever. I'm. I actually probably could have, maybe I could have gone into this room here and got a better angle at fighting them, but I was kind of like irritated that I was doing bad so I just wanted to die so that's this is kinda cool it's a lake here I, d I don't like swimming in roguelikes because um, there's often a lot of penalties like your potions will get watered down your armor will get uh, um, rusted and stuff so I just I don't like to mess with water unless I have to this is kind of a there's a conjurer but I don't think I noticed him which is really bad <laughs> somehow I just didn't see him but anyways this is the bog and the bog like excretes this uh, explosive gas I haven't actually played with it yet I haven't had an opportunity but I imagine that given the opportunity this whole room would completely explode so that's kind of exciting uh, might create some interesting situations like deeper levels with like fire breathing dragons or um, maybe if it was electrocuted it would explode and you know maybe there's some type of a um, enemy that would shock you or a wizard that's not very smart that might zap you um, so 
uh, yeah, I gotta be alert, be be ready for those explosive rooms. The da you saw I took damage probably. The gas didn't do damage to me. The arrow turret did. I walked right in front of it. I managed to get that conjure pretty easily. But watch this other conjure that's in this room. Watch him cheese me. I step in. He's got nothing, right? So I'm like, sweet. Uh, I don't know why I backed out. Oh, I was gonna kill this guy first. That's right. But that, that was a bad decision. But then all these spectral points just start running out of the room and attacking me down the hall. So I'm kind of playing like an idiot here because I forgot about like the, the other goblin. But the other goblin can run for me indefinitely anyways. So, you know, I'm new to this game and I'm, I'm not properly uh, um, assessing my threats, I guess. And I'm like, whatever, it's a conjurer. I've killed like three of those before. And I'm just YOLOing in, but I'm at 40% health already. And I'm not thinking ahead. Because all I'm thinking is there's only one sword left, and then him, and then I'll win. But really, what happens is, I kill this sword, I step in, and then there's five more swords. And remember, I can't attack diagonally. He's cheesing me by standing there. I can't hit him. And now he's now I'm being tanked by, you know, three swords. And I kill them, and then there's three more. And I kill them, and I step forward. I'm at 25% health. Like, I'm totally tunneling for this guy. Step forward here. I got him, right? He's right next to me. He has no swords. No problem, right? Summons four more swords. And then steps behind them. And now I have like no health. And these swords are taking me. I kill them all finally here. And then there's five more. And I'm completely trapped and I died. So now I know kind of to not be an idiot. And to, you know, be more careful. So I think if I would have kept chasing the other goblin, it would have worked out better. And I shouldn't have let myself be like repositioned like that. But I don't know if it's like fake or if it's real, but it definitely seems like the enemies in this game are a lot stronger. Or not stronger, rather, but smarter than most other games. And I like to imagine that Brogue has implemented some sort of uh, superior AI than is normally found in uh, roguelikes. I haven't ever seen decent AI in any roguelike. So, um,. I mean, not that there aren't any. There, there probably are. I just, I've played a lot of roguelikes, but I haven't played them all. So, we can see my uh, inventory here. Uh, the chainmail that I didn't put, that I never put on, that I, I wanted to identify, is a negative three chainmail vulnerability. The vulnerability enchantment. Um, it, uh, I guess, doubles the damage you receive. So I'm kind of glad I didn't use that one. This scroll, you'll remember, it was like a bad scroll. It was marked black. Excuse me, summons monsters. So, uh, and then this one's really interesting. This is a potion of descent. That's the tan potion I never used. When you un when you uncork it, right, and open it, the fumes come out and they like vaporize the floor underneath you, and you fall down the dungeon floor. And then the cool thing about, like, that's not that bad, Rat. That's like a reading a curse scroll of game level while you're confused in that hack. But with the Potion of Descent, if you throw it at someone, then you can affect them too. Like, there's like a Minotaur or something ridiculous. I don't even know if there are Minotaurs in this game. But if you just walk into a room and you're like, oh, I don't want to mess with this jelly. Like, you can just throw a Potion of Descent at them and they'll fall off the next level, I think. I imagine. I don't know if they'll split. The jelly might split when it gets hit by the potion. But anyways. This game's like really delivering with uh, with depth, the depth of gameplay I'm looking for in roguelikes. So I'm excited to continue playing and to, to see uh, what more stuff happens. So that was my uh, second playthrough. Well, not playthrough, of course, but my second time playing. I'm going to, I have to run to the bathroom real quick, but I'm going to turn on, um, I just found a new feature. It's called autopilot. And so I can have it play while I'm not here. So, uh, be right back.
Surprise, surprise, I'm dead. Hopefully that ran for a little bit of time. I know it slows down when you're almost dead. And of course a goblin conjurer was what killed me. Alright, let's play an actual game here. Alright, so I have 12 strength, 3 armor, dagger, leather armor, jingo. So I think you always get the same start in this game. Another rickety rope bridge. So the the X button, the um, is like the explore button. It'll auto fight for you, and it always loots. So it's really cool because kind of when you're doing boring stuff like the first level, the, nothing's really gonna kill me here. I mean, it's possible, but it's probably not going to happen. I can just kind of hit the X button and I don't really have to worry that much about the early game. Like the really early game. So no path for further exploration. Another cool thing about this game is I've probably already discovered, well obviously I know where the up staircase is. It's the first level. It's probably like NAHAC where you'll lose the game if you leave. I, I don't really know. but I can just push the down arrow key twice and it'll automatically walk towards the down arrow. And I can just push the up arrow and it'll highlight the path and it'll walk up. So the interface is streamlined. There's stuff like this that has been in like uh, uh, Dungeon Crawl, Stone Soup, the auto explore buttons and finding, you know, pathing easier. Um, it's nice to see it implemented here. You can track the location of like certain things that you've discovered in that hack, but the interface is like really clumsy and I never use it. So there's like there's a interesting chasm here and then across it there's a, a door key on a candlelit altar. Um there's no way for me to cross the chasm. I mean maybe one of my potions is a potion of levitation, but I I kinda wanna wait until I have more unidentified items before I start quaffing potions because one of them might be a um a potion of detect magic, so I'm gonna keep exploring. Oh, eel, don't wanna fight you. Don't wanna fight eels. They're kinda of strong. Uh auto explore really wants to go over here though. I wonder if I can fight the eel. Well I got through there without seeing it, so that's good. Alright. A mace? This eel is like really messing with me. I lost like half my health. That one body of water like goes through the whole dungeon level, so I have to fight this eel. It'll kill me in two hits right now, so I'm gonna go down here and uh and rest. I'm not gonna use the, the uh blood wart thing. Just in case I I need it, I can just I can rest, that's fine. What are these? Jackals? Alright. Okay, let's see if I can get through here. You got me a little bit there. I trapped myself. Oh, jeez. Okay. I don't know if I can get through this. We'll see. This eel's kind of inconvenient. I don't know if I can kill eels. I'm totally trapped here, though. Kill me in three hits. I defeat it in five hits. I'm surrounded, so um, I can't win. Cannot win this fight. I could start quaffing potions or reading scrolls. I'm gonna quaff the tan potion. Interesting. The tan potion was a potion of descent last time too. The thing is, I'm gonna fall through the hole. The fall will probably kill me. So that that wasn't a really very good escape. But um that's 
honestly, it's kind of a little bit disappointing because once I learn the the colors of all the potions, I'll know what they are without um without identifying them. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, damage by the fall, you die. The eels are here. I don't know if they're alive though. But oh well, let's try again. Wow, that's a really big chasm. Cobalt, War Axe. The War Axe is going to be too heavy for me to wield because I only have 12 strength. I'm going to need to wield much easier to wield things like um, daggers, I guess. How am I doing? Kind of low on health. That's okay. What's that? Oh, oh, a ring, of course. Okay. Get the ring, kill the cobalt. I'm passively regenerating, just fine. I'm not taking very much damage. Crimson potion. I don't think I've ever seen a crimson potion. So I'm gonna go down. See, so I just push the down key, and then it highlights this whole path here, all the way to the down down arrow. And then I can just push down again. Where's the cobalt? Oh, there he is. He's in my way. Um, yeah, I'm not actually pushing the down key. I'm, as you can see I'm pushing shift plus uh, plus period. Oh, I don't think that's showing up on the. It's not showing up on OSD, but I'm I'm pushing the down bracket. Green potion, crimson potion. I'll probably use X for Auto Explorer until Dungeon Level 3. I haven't really found anything super threatening except for eels. That's really a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the butt because I have to like actually move. <laughs> I can't just push the X button. There's a bloat. He's wandering. I'm going to avoid the bloat. Oh, he's hunting now. That's a problem. I don't know if they'll actually attack me. Oh, it dies when it attacks. So if it catches up to me, which it's probably faster than me, um, it'll blow up and then the poison gas will fill uh, everywhere. And I'll have to run through the water. I might just run towards the down staircase. Yeah, okay, I got away. That's fine. Okay. Oops, what did I do? Another blow. This time it's farther away so I can uh, throw a dart at it. And it'll blow up, but um, I can run away from the gas because I got time. It's far away. I don't actually know how far the gas spreads, but it spreads pretty far, you can see. And uh, I assume it dissipates after a while. I've actually never stuck around to find out. We'll probably find out here. I keep saying it, but it's hard to get over. This game is really pretty. Not really in the typical sense where, you know, you have sweeping landscapes and detail. Oops, I popped a, a seed pod. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, not in the high budget sort of way. It's just, it's designed in such a way that it, you know, uses the graphics that were found in the console games. Not console like Xbox, but you know, console like curses. Or, um. Like NetHack or Rogue, I guess. It's probably a better one, better example to use. This is a vent, isn't it? Yeah, it's an inactive gas vent. Anyways, it also has the, it's it's obviously really a graphical interface. I, I shouldn't say obviously, but I really don't think that it's a, uh, this is a, a switch paralysis trigger. I guess I noticed it. It's obviously a graphical game, but it's really cool to use the ASCII style graphics 
so it still feels like an old uh, old roguelike, but it's it makes it feel really pretty when uh when you get all the cool graphical effects like the flame explosions and such. Let's go down here. I don't know where the key is, and I don't think I'm gonna find it. There's a conjurer there. I don't want to fight him. That's weird that that cobalt walked right by me. Guess he doesn't feel like fighting. Oh, there he goes. He's hunting now, but he can't have it. Oh yeah, he can. There we go. Oh, pink jelly. Pink jelly, lava pit, and a bog in the distance. It's kind of nice that jellies don't regenerate. Hopefully I can kill this. I don't think I can. No, I can't. Dang. Sucking it up today. Wow, how did I have more points that time than I did when I got to depth 7? That's weird. So I'm kind of surprised he didn't go and pick up the potions. Plate armor. Way too heavy for me. Found a plate armor in the lake. It seems like in explore mode, your character will just endlessly melee everything. So, you know, obviously you don't want to auto fight enemies that you don't want to melee, like the bloat. Um, your character will run right up to a bloat and melee them. It's a door key, isn't it? <coughs> Sorry. There's probably a trap under it. I mean, I don't. One time I picked up a door key and there was a trap under it. Um. But whatever. Altar attracts into the ground with a grinding sound. A torch falls from its mount and lies on the floor. So I should have a torch now, right? Nope. No torch. That's weird. Oh, the fire started. There's billowing flames. Oh, shoot. I'm on grass like fungus. So I'm going to, this whole room is going to light on fire. Because all this grass like fungus is probably, I mean, I don't know, but I, I imagine it's probably flammable. I don't have an escape here. Um, I'm just going to run through the fire and wish for the best. What's this here? Sputtering embers. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. Well, that's lucky I got out fast enough. I barely took any damage. That's nice. I thought I thought for sure that was gonna kill me. Sorry. I thought for sure that was gonna kill me. Alright, onward. Let's see we got a jackal there. Rickety rope bridge. Brown potion. Brown potion. I don't think I know what the brown potion is yet. Oh, there's two eels. Man, I gotta stop using explore. It's not good. See how much damage I took from those eels? I guess I could click around with my mouse. I don't know why, I just don't like using the mouse in um, roguelikes. Caustic gas trap. No, it's not happening. Three rations of food. That's really good. I'm very happy with that. There's a bog in here. Gotta be really careful not to do anything that would ignite this, uh, this, this explosive gas.
Is that a goblin? Yeah. He did a lot of damage to me. That's amazing. So I guess the deep foliage probably was only going to exist in the earlier levels. They come in depth too. I can't imagine any sunlight really comes in when you're on like depth 20. Wow. Okay. Monkey. He's trying to steal something. I don't. You got a potion, but I'm gonna throw darts at him. Dang, he got away. There we go. Oh, there's a staircase. Goblin conjurer, man. I want to hit him now. Like, I don't want to wait and walk up to him. I don't know why he's not conjuring anything. There we go. I mean, that that one turn you take to walk up, and you'll have five more enemies to deal with. Just seems like it's better to just take him out when you have the opportunity. Or at least get in a little bit of damage. Why is my uh, game being weird? He's not actually pathfinding toward... He... That's weird. See, it's highlighting the down arrow, but it's not giving me a path. I guess I haven't found a path yet, but when I go to explore, I see no path for further exploration. Yeah, the door to get into there. Is there a search button in this game? Maybe I can search for a secret. Hmm. I might just dive down the chasm. Yeah, I'm just gonna dive down the chasm. I don't want to slow down the stream. So it took about um, maybe a third of my health. There's a toad here. I'm gonna uh, shoot. I have to fight it. Dang, a pink jelly. This jelly's gonna kill me. Or get me killed. Oh man. I should have identified my uh my potions and such in the last level. Go for it. Yep, let's see what I had. Portion of life, telepathy, caustic gas. Oh god. Strength, darkness, detect magic, identify, wand of beckoning, and wand of invisibility. The beckoning, I guess you like, you can zap someone with it and it makes them come toward you. I don't know if you can zap items though. I think you have to zap, uh, zap enemies. Targeted creature in the proximity. Man, I can't believe I died on dungeon level 4. So bad. Fucking pink jellies. Kinda worried my dog's gonna start barking really loudly. Well, we're okay. Alright, one more game. Then I'll stop the stream. So yeah, I have 12, I have 12 strength, 3 armor again. So that, that must be the start. Um, so far I haven't noticed any class selection or anything in this game, so it seems like you pretty much always start the same. Cobalt. 
gold, cobalt, bloodwort. So some gold, jackal. I gotta figure out when the sweet spot is for risking my life on identifying all my items. And I guess there's not really a whole lot of advantage to waiting. So when I clear this level, I'll quaff some potions and see if I can't find anything. Alright, I'll do it right now. Crimson potion. Strength, nice. I'll drink the other one. Nice, 14 strength. Puce. Fire. Huh. Um. <laughs> Quaff another potion? <laughs> Speed, okay. Alright. I float into the air. And I'm a god, basically, is what happens here. I'm a god. That was strategy. That was planned. That was skill. All right. You heal completely, and your maximum health increases by 33%. So I'm hasted, levitating. I'm pretty hungry, actually. Have I got anything else to randomly quaff? Yes, I do. Colors are everywhere. All right, potion of hallucination. I'll read the scroll. H. Scroll of identify. Like can use it to identify the other scroll, which is scroll of recharging. All right. Good, 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 good. I have to rest up though, because I don't want to. Um, go into the next level while hallucinating. Is that really a statue? And a carpet here. How did I miss that? Is that real? It is battle of the key. So note to self, I've survived long enough for it to matter. The uh Whoa, I levitated across the chasm. Uh that was probably a really bad idea, because I'm not levitating anymore. Oop, punch through a hole. Damage by the fall. Still hallucinating. I, I see a lich. Well, I hope not. Alright, things are charging me. I don't know what they are. Do I have another potion of levitation? No, I don't. That's too bad. Monkey. Scroll of identify. Nice. It's really handy to uh, just to know what anything is because when you find it on the ground, you know what it is, and the utility of your items increases a lot because you can have a lot of great items in your inventory, but if you don't know what they are and you're scared to use them. They're completely useless to you. And so now I can pick up this chainmail. I can read the scroll of identify. Instead of carrying around this chainmail everywhere, I can know that it is not cursed. So I can put it on. So it takes a while in this game to, to put armor on. You get a um, an alert here up at the top where it's flashing. So let's like your AC like gradually increases. I don't actually know what happens if you get attacked during that time, but I have an armor rating of five now, which I'm really happy with. I'm gonna drop my leather armor. Um, I don't know if enemies can like 
pick up your armor and put it on in this game, but it's the only way I can find out is to drop it on the ground, I guess. Plus there's no use in carrying around inferior armor. Unless I expect to lose that armor. Like if it's like an acid enemy or something weird like that. What are those? Are those jellies or jackals? Okay, jackals. Good. Jackals I can do. So I hope I can customize this OSD thing right here. Because it remembers a lot of key presses consecutively and it's not that interesting to see you know. I guess it's not that interesting to see what key I'm pushing anyways, but the idea was I've tried to do like uh look like videos in the past and people had a hard time keeping track of what I was doing. And um like now you know I just open my inventory with the I button, for instance. And you can see how I'm selecting things. I don't have to explain key presses to new to new people. Um but the move movement, like you move with H J K L. So H J K L. And it's this really ergonomic alternative to using the arrow keys to explore. And I really like it. It's it's how I used um it's how I played um NetHack. I still do. I mean I'm kind of I haven't played NetHack in a long time, but I played it yesterday on the stream. And I kinda wanna get back into it. But yeah, anyways, I, I used to play with HJKL because it's just nice. It's better than using arrow keys, and it captures diagonally easier on a 10 keyless keyboard, which is the kind of keyboard I use. So I don't have to move with the arrow keys and then go up here and press like 9, 7, 3, 1, like that, you know? Alright, I'm going to check out some of these scrolls, because I have a scroll, well, actually I only have one, but I'm going to read it anyways, just for fun. Scroll of enchantment. I'll enchant my chainmail. Sometimes it's fun just to get lucky. As you know, because I just survived, and that was fun. Pink jelly, awesome. Where are you? Far away, even better. Toad. Oh wow, I didn't get hallucinated. That's really weird. I'm getting hungry, but I have a lot of food. It'll be fine. Okay, I don't have a lot. I only have two, but you know, that's pretty good. Pink jelly. See, the garbage things, they still surround you. They like spawn behind you and stuff. Did I get them all? I got them all. Another pink jelly. So if you stand in the doorway, they'll always spawn on one end. Alright. That's the new strat then. You're probably wondering about diagonals if you don't know about HJKL. It's Y, U, N B. I know it seems kind of weird, and it is, but once I got used to it, I really liked it a lot. Um, I think, like VI, I think VI uses HJKL, the terminal text editor that's used in like Linuxy stuff. Ooh, eucalyptus stuff. See, now I'm trying to think, because I've seen it, like Firebolt, I've seen, um, like one that blocks with crystal, it like spawns a crystal there to escape. You know, these, these the staffs. I've seen a, a beckoning, beckoning staff, I think. I've seen um, one that like duplicates an enemy. So I wonder, you know, I wonder if there's a way, if I should just be spamming sta staffs to find out what they do too. I mean, honestly, I'm kind of scared to, but, it, you know, it might be worth it, because this might be a really powerful staff I have right now. Eucalyptus, eucalyptus staff. Also, it seems like in this game, staffs slowly regenerate their charges over time. So even if I waste a charge out of it, just and nothing happens, and I don't know what happened. Um, I'm going to try it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it right now. 
K. Apply. Direction. Down. Down. Oh, it's targeted. I'll do it right here. Staff of Obstruction. Okay. So that's really cool. It creates these, these cool crystal things. And I can spam it like in the middle of a doorway so someone can't get through. But I can also imprison people in the crystal. And then it slowly just goes away. So yeah, I have, I have no idea how many charges it has. I don't know if I can uh, like equip it or do I just supply it? I have supply it. Okay. Um, but it probably has uh, two more charges. Quaff a potion of strength, so I'm at 15 strength now. Getting up there. I can actually put on this axe, but I don't know if it's cursed yet. So I'm going to wait until I find a... Um, you know what? I'm zapping it. Screw it. Well, I used it, but I don't know what it does, so I just wasted the charge. That's okay. Potion of Hallucination. See, I don't think that's a useful potion at all. I don't think, even if I throw it at an enemy, won't they still attack me? So I guess it's just kind of funny. I can just be like... we. Pretty colors. Just like recreationally using dangerous potions. Oh, it's a phylactery. Phylactery. Wow, that's not good. You guys probably know that, uh, Oh shit. <laughs> Why am I so stupid? Why? <laughs> uh, you know, on the bright side, it's prettier now, but there's caustic gas in the air. I have to figure out which way I want to go, because here, at, at the top area here, there's less escape room, I guess, but there's less, I guess I can just go down. I might die first though. Alright, I got lucky. I'm done goofing off though. It's a really bad idea to just quaff potions of hallucination for fun. <laughs> Drugs are bad. Yeah, they're bad. Just gonna rest up here. See a flame turret. Oh shit. Oh, I'm not gonna make it, guys. I'm done for. It's a jelly. And it chased me. It's chasing me. It just spawned behind me. That's so garbage. The black jelly's laughing at me. The tentacle horror is singing. Oh god. Oh, I'm done. So done for. Ooh, I got him. Not even close. Alright. It's still, it's kind of hard to decide what to do. Because, like, there's probably, okay, there's probably jellies down the staircase. Still. Maybe. Probably. I don't know what this thing is. This laughing vampire bat. I could use a staff charge and block the entrance for a few more turns and hope that my hallucination will be gone by the time it comes back. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do that. I'm just gonna play it safe. It's it's not a good idea to waste your uh your charges, but Oh wait, it keeps going. It doesn't even stop. I thought it stopped where I targeted. Well, whatever it was, it died immediately. Oh, thank God my hallucinations are gone. Okay. What a bad trip, man. Monkey, don't steal my things. 
Thank you. It's my white potion. This is another trap here. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and not touch the fire trap. That's all right. Cobalt. Another cobalt that can't catch up to you. You see a monkey, you see a monkey, you see a monkey. Well, that doesn't sound like fun. I think I'll leave. Where's the arrow turret? Oh, did it shoot me? It didn't even shoot me. So weird. So I did find the, I think I found the potion of levitation this playthrough. And if I'm not making them up because I'm dying so often, I think I need, no, I think that was last run, wasn't it? As the floor begins to collapse. Well, let's see if I can get out in time. Whoa, this is awesome. You see that chasm forming? That is way too cool. I wonder how far it's going to collapse. Oh shit, a pink jelly, are you kidding? Come on guys, do we really need more pink jellies in this game? These vampire bats are really tough. I'm gonna run actually. Oh shit, I ran the wrong way. <laughs> I'm so screwed. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, oops, just kidding. That was a joke. Alright, I'm gonna let the thing come at me. Oh my god, it's doing so much damage. I have to fight it. I I was gonna try to entomb it, but I pushed the wrong button because I'm bad at video games. So I th I don't know if I shoot it now, will I be hit by a crystal too? Because like there was a big chunk of crystal whenever it landed. Is it even bad to be entombed in crystal? I mean, this thing is definitely gonna kill me. It's chunking me really hard. Like one of them will kill me in five hits, and you know, in two turns, there's gonna be three of them. I'm doing it. I'm going for it. So I'm trapped too. I don't appear to be regenerating. Ooh, I got out first. Oh, dang it. No, I didn't. <sighs> Another thing I could do, and this seems kind of radical because it is. I can jump down that chasm, but the fall will probably kill me. But I'm going for it because that's that's what heroes do. They go for things. Okay, I'm gonna be hallucinated again. Sweet. Let's do this. Oh wow, well, that went away really fast. And I'm healing. Another toad. Okay. There's poisonous gas coming out over there. Or not poisonous, but explosive. Um, but everything seems to be okay. This is a locked door here. I can open it because I have a key. Oh, it's an acid mound. Dang. Um, I don't know how they work in this game. You know, like in some games, if you punch an acid, like an acidic creature, it'll erode your hand and deal extra damage or like get on your clothes. I mean, I could try putting on one of these random axes that I can equip now and get a twofer because, well, it degrades it. And then, I'm trying to think, like I could try on an axe and there might be a bonus because if it's a bad axe and I damage it and destroy it by attacking the toad. Then I can kind of get out of free. If it's a curse, then maybe it'll be destroyed. But maybe it'll degrade but not become destroyed. 
and it'll be even worse if it's cursed. But I'm going to do it anyways. Your chainmail weakens. Dang it. Negative one chainmail. Yeah, that's why you want to hold on. Remember, I said there's no no point in holding on to your weapon armor. I guess I'm still on a level four, and my axe is, I assumed, I assumed terrible. So I'm gonna try this one. Up. That wasn't a locked door. I thought that was a locked door for some reason. See a bloat? Where's the bloat? Really far away. Come here. Come on. Come here. Come here. Oh dang, I can throw these so far. I don't know if that's gonna go away though. Oh yeah, it goes away. All right, confirmed. Good, good, good. Monkey. Yeah, I. There's another acid mound. Where's this will o' wisp? Well, I have to, I have to, one thing at a time, you have to take care of this as well. See, he can just slime me anyways. What a pain in the butt. I, sh I should have tried harder to range him. To eat real quick because I'm hungry. Heal up a little bit. There's another acid mound. You know what? I'm out of here. Peace out, guys. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care about the totems. I don't care about the eels. I'm out of here. Screw that level. I don't want any of that. You see a pink jelly. All right, let's do this. It's fine. I'm not even mad about seeing a pink jelly at all. That's totally okay with me. So my axe seems to be doing okay. I don't know. I degraded it, I guess. But, um... I mean, I'm killing things. That's good, right? In, in this context. Goblin. Easy. A spider. So I haven't fought a spider yet. I think I fought a spider when I was AFK uh, autopiloting, but um, they're probably poisonous, and I don't know if I have poison resistance or any way to protect against poison resistance or a poison, so I'm going to throw a couple darts at it and then melee it and see what happens. Oh, sweet, spider web. Awesome. That kind of bums me out a little bit. Not anymore. I'm gonna throw an axe at it. Yeah. Throw a dagger at it. Throw nothing. I'm gonna wait now. Okay, here we go. That I defeated it. So that's a lot of acid stuff going on over there. Um that kind of that's not that great. Here's an ogre. I probably won't win this fight. Luckily they're really slow. Not slow enough. Now this ogre's gonna kill me. Ha! <laughs> I had to try. I mean it was 
I didn't have a chance. Okay. But I made it to depth 10. That's definitely the farthest I've ever been in this game. The farthest I've been, you saw, was a 7. So, that's that. Let's see what I had on me. Maybe I had something cool. I was I was going to, as soon as I got to a, a safe spot, I was going to figure out what all my potions were. Um, I got to start doing that more often. I, I wait too long, and it... It limits my opportunities. So my, my axe was negative one because of the the um the acid. I don't know what kind of condition the other axe was in because it was on the ground because I threw it at a spider. Um, let's see, negative three chain mail. That one we already knew. All right. Oh, I had detect magic on me. I actually had two of them. Paralysis, fire immunity, invisibility, confusion, telepathy, scrolls of recharging, of shattering. Shattering is really cool. I streamed that earlier, but no one was in the stream when it happened, and I wasn't recording, so I'll show you guys sometime. It looks really cool. Or you can play the game and figure it out for yourself. Staff of Obstruction, which I'm really happy I found. And I'm going to start randomly zapping staffs whenever I find them. Because that paid off. Wand of Beckoning. Okay. Can't really get excited about that one. And a door key. All right, that's fun. I don't think I need to save this recording for any reason. All right. Well, I'm done streaming for now. Done recording. Um, I'm gonna do some other stuff for a while. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you're on Twitch, watching the uh, previous broadcasts, or if you're on YouTube, come check me out. I'll be playing every day for a while. Usually uh early afternoon, well mid afternoon. Usually around like two or three. Um for a couple weeks, two or three Pacific Standard Time, so GMT minus seven. And uh I'll I'll figure out a more reasonable schedule later on. Um but yeah, I just got a lot of free time in the next couple of weeks, so Alright, well thanks for watching.